Okay, we've uh, added in what we call templates in Production Manager. It replaces the bill of materials tables for storing the um, templates or bill of materials, like recipe or whatever you want to call it. So if you first start a new uh, production order, same as before, you would put the, the uh, item on here. And if the item has never been used as a template in the past, it will draw from the bill of materials tables. If it has come from a template, it will draw from the template. So you'll see here over to the right, in this case, it came from template number one. So if I pull this down, template number one is right there. So it pulled from this template. Now you notice that you can have multiple templates for that same item. So we have a template number four and a five here, actually a six and a seven, for the FCB 250 as well. So if you don't want to use template number one, which would be your one you'd use the most, obviously, you can switch that by going in here and choosing template number six. And this one here, we've set up using a different description, which is red paint. So now it brings in a different set of bill of material, uh, pulling in other items. So that allows you to have the same finished product in inventory, but then allow you to have different versions of it. So like I said, in this case, different paint or um, different items like that. So then if you're on this production order you're creating now, and here you can see that it is a production order, although you could decide to make it another new template, and it would just get another template number. But in here now, if you make changes, so let's say I change this item and put a different quantity in here, I could, by highlighting the top item here, go push to template, and it would update the template. So if you're working on a production order and you want to update that, you can then push that to the template. Now, at any time, if you wish, if you're working on something and you're just uh, making some change, you don't want to push to the template or the master, you can do so. Um, or at any time, of course, you can always pull back from the template. So the template, again, is that template number one, or I guess we move that to number five here now. We can then pull back from the number five template and it'll switch it back again to what uh, it was before uh, we made our changes. So then on a, a production order that has a sub-assembly on it, it can have its own template. So this just came from the regular template number one, but I can come here and reselect, let's see, template number two for an FCB uh, 112. So now it's switched components and it's got a different set of components here. And you can also now update this. So if it's gonna change, say only into one of them here, and then you can highlight that item now and push it back to the template so that the template gets updated. And if you want to at any time, of course, you can pull back from the template. If it hadn't already been updated, you can uh, pull back from the template as well. Okay, so if we go back to the list, <clears throat> you'll see we've got on the list here, it shows us what are templates and what aren't. So uh, on build number here, they all start with a T. I got a couple of filters set so I can look at just templates and just has order type equals template and production orders only. And then I see the production orders only. But you notice on this list that it shows what template that that came from. So if that template had a, has changed and you had not done any pushes to it or pull from it or pushes from the template back to the, to the production order, then you can highlight a production order and you hit pull from template. And when I do that, it just flashes. And what it does is that it looks at the templates. So let's go back at all of them. And if this one came from template number one, it goes to this one. And any changes that reflected that were done in uh, template number one will get pulled to production order number eight. On the other hand, you can highlight a template and you can start a, another new one. So you can then highlight this template and create a... Uh, a a new production order from a template. So when you do that, it just pulls it up, puts the template number on here. And then when I save this production order, you'll see we've got another one, number 17 from uh, template number one. So all of these came from template number one. And if you made a, math, uh, a change to your template, so therefore you can go into that template. And if you make a change to this, let's say you want it all in the to be uh, change so you're substituting for instance say these screws you're taking them out and you're going to insert 
and put in a different item. Uh, doesn't matter what it is. I'll throw something else on here. Okay, one of these. And now you want to have that all of your open production orders that came from template number one. What you want to do is save it, give it a revision number if you wish, and then hit update. And you, when you click update, it updates all the production orders. So it shows, it shows you a list of them, all the ones it's going to update. And you can just hit apply and it updates them. In some cases, if it can't, so it, if it, if it uh, show, it'll show you a, a reason why it can't be done. So if I just move that a little bit wider. So it failed, unable to update a template with an assemble quantity. So it tells you what the reason is it can't do it. Okay, so all the all the uh, templates and open production or get updated automatically for you. Okay, so if you do create a new item, and I'll just do it from here on inside the production order, you'll see that all the items are shown in here. But if I make a change, so if I change this one, say we're going to make a change to that, notice what happens is that the the, the background is a darker color. So if I just save and close this right now, this is number build number 19 we're in. So if I go back into 19, you'll see that it always has that color. What that means is that's the, an item that's been changed and it's different from the template number one that we chose. So every time you change anything or even add a new item to it, you'll see that it's in a darker color. So you'll always know which items uh, are, de are deviating, deviating from the actual template.